Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the fifth episode of the third season of Overlord. I know what some of you are thinking, hey, didn't you just react to an episode of this anime like yesterday? Yes, yes I did, because this is one of those shows I felt like really far behind on. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making up the, the making it up now, so. Last episode, Ayn's pretty much told Beta what's up, what, uh, what the current situation is, and who she needs to protect, and all that good stuff. And also explored a cave with Aura, uh, having a nice chat with some evil monsters and getting them to cooperate, pretty much. That's kind of what last episode was. So let's watch this one. Three, two, one, play. Alright, yeah, we kind of ended off on uh, some sort of alarm. Everybody, hurry up and panic and run around. Oh, a troll. Or an ogre. For a second, I thought I saw the front of a school bus. Don't leave me with a lady. <laughs> well, she seems to understand pretty quickly. That's good. <laughs> yes, an evil guy in your minds. He watches you closely. Not in a weird way or anything, just... He has use for you. You know, in Nefira. Well, mostly Nefira, but... You're important in Nefira, so... I always love all the walking in the Overload openings. I don't know where they're going, but... Oh, yes I do. They're going to Ions. What am I even saying? But, you know, there's other people walking in the opening that aren't going to Ions. Like, like, like them, for instance. They're probably not walking to Ions. Man, those mouths are really... <laughs> I know you're a very crazy, Barry. Guy travels in style. Yeah, Overload openings are always really good. Like, always, all three seasons. Chapter 5, Two Leaders. Up soda? I'm just kidding. Don't know why they feel the need to use 3D for the Geogers, but... <laughs> Leave it to you. Oh? Oh. I, I guess they can handle that. Throw things. I should hope so. This is a hard, difficult job to mess up. Well, you'll see. Well, of course. Where else will they be heading? You do that. You can move, you can move. Well, here we go. This should be something, all right. Everyone's understandably nervous and tense. But they do have big walls, so... You know, I don't know how much that would help, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Your ears aren't even on fire. You cut yourself an army. You can't really blot out the sun because it's nighttime, but you can still try.
<laughs> Throw rocks. <laughs> this is the perfect time to panic. Oh, God. That was a good shot. Well, through the safest spot you can be in the village. Let's see if it's enough, you know, for you to not die. Waiting for the gates to go down. There we go. They may be brainless, but they are big and strong. Still counts for a lot. Ow. Not my arm. Ow, definitely not my face. That's disgusting. Oh, God. Having your f goop on your face, then your hand stuck to your face, and then your hand shot with arrows. That's a horrible way to go. Isn't that, uh, goo? I want to call him Gardu at first. Yeah, you're no wines. My cat's rolling around under my desk, mildly distracting. Today is a good day to die. Yes. Die for the greater good. You know lizard men, but let's see what you can do. Um, that's not a good sound. Uh, and it was that day humanity learned. I think they call it a titan, I mean a troll. I bet it does. Rude. Oh god, that thing is just the... Uh... Not that different than a titan. Except for the fact that it can climb. Got quite the nose on it. I mean, they already mentioned it sends a smell, so. Sandwiches aren't that bad, given the right circumstances. But I guess this, this is a, a bad example. Yeah, we just need to survive. <laughs> you know, not die. You would die if you fought it. <laughs> I'm having a plan. You can group up and hit it till it dies. See how that works. Lots. <laughs> I guess it's as high as they can count. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> right for the nose, too. <laughs> Let me check the swamp. <laughs> yeah, it just has a scent on it. It's not... No need to be butthurt about it. <laughs> Bit confused. You know, he already has his hair covering his eyes, now he has a hood over his head, too. wonder what his visibility is like. Ah! -ha!
You, you lucky that I dodged that. It is a bit strange, almost like he's a, you know, a death knight troll. Or whatever you call it. An undead troll. Powerful, put it mildly. Yeah, but the point is it has a smell to it. Get him right in the schnoz with it. A <laughs> way to take turns. You know, with the, they're all hood cloaks on, it's, uh, you can hardly tell them apart from the right angle. Ah. Uh. Well, it was a good plan for a while. <laughs> Got stuck. Well, it's not really a good plan here, so just do what you think is best, I guess. Wow, he basically confessed there. Have we actually seen him do magic before? I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to think. I don't really see him do much magic in this series, just his usual alchemy stuff. And of course, when he was forced to wear that one thing. Yeah. Ooh, a hypnotism magic, that would come in handy. Ow, he's not even that intelligent. Does your magic suck that much? Your barrel roll, or whatever it helps you avoid getting need. But, uh, yeah. It's not doing so well. <laughs> yeah, well, it looked like you used magic to help whatever you used. <laughs> That's why it sucks to be barefoot. <laughs> But then you just walk around it. Yeah. Unless she was really dense and didn't pick up on him, which is possible in anime, but... I don't think the fear will die here, though. So... I guess we'll see how he gets out of this. I mean... If nothing else, Beta was told to protect these people, so if nothing else, she should show up. Come on, let me see. Okay. Beta did show up. So she did follow her one job. Good to see. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if they had any idea how powerful she was before now, because they definitely do now. <laughs> uh. But yeah, a troll is nothing compared to a Pletius maid. Like, not even in the same category. Like, orders of magnitude stronger. <laughs> the blood on it. Yeah, she already took care of it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, wow, beta. Somehow. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I just had to make sure you guys didn't die, so I'm leaving now. Yes, uh, but home visits. <laughs> I'd also like how quickly she just like healed them up like it was nothing. So I get to sneeze, so don't be surprised if I do soon. Especially Nefira, he was saved. And, you know, now she knows how he feels about her, so... I don't blame you. Well, I'm sure it's close enough. I mean, you would know better than he would. <laughs> I bet it would. Surprised not to see any blush in there, but... So, yeah. <laughs> Obviously the same sword that we saw before. Almost like it was dead or something. Yes. It was goo. Hmm. Really nice outfit actually. I could have been better myself, but well, now we get some blushing. <laughs> Nemu. She loves sneaking up on people, doesn't she? Yes, you are. You are the head maid. All the people, all the people that matter, come with me. Yeah, I think you'll quite enjoy Heinz's home. It's pretty nice. <laughs> I was waiting for this. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> oh my god, this is great. <laughs> uh, if only she knew how dangerous that place was for humans. <laughs> and of course, you know, he has the face mask on. <laughs> Sort of. He would help from others. They're not around anymore, but they did help. <laughs> so yeah, they were pretty cool. I kind of want to get more of them. You know, Buka Buka Chagama. <laughs> Man, the... Uh... A bit nicer than any of the homes in your village, huh? It'll be fine. He is, sort of. That's a nice teacup. <laughs> I bet they're really nervous. Just put all the sugar in there, all of it. <laughs> At least she's not missing. I bet it is. <laughs> uh, cute. She's still alive, yay. Well, when you have a small army of maids, it kind of happens. But there was a lot to show her.
Just don't serve them human. They won't like that. Wow. Speak English, or at least Japanese, please. Good god. I wouldn't mind having dragon meat. Can you run that by me again? Okay. I know, right? Just say it word for word. Sure, why not? <laughs> I have no idea what any of you are talking about, so just give us what you want. Uh, that's a bit disappointing. Because that would have made it so much funnier. She is so excited to be here. I mean, it's definitely the fanciest place she's ever been in her entire life, so... Growing up in a small village. <laughs> yeah, you can't win against signs. Yeah. <laughs> and even he's blushing a little bit. And holding, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Or blind me either. But yeah, they're basically together now, so good for you. I knew that I knew the AD was gonna play there. Well, next episode comes out soon, so it's not a big deal, but But yeah, that was a pretty good episode. Uh, stretching, stretching, stretching. Okay. Man, Demiurge looks so menacing in that shot. So that was the fifth episode of the third season of Overlord. And the this episode started off with the attack of the village, basically, and they needed to defend themselves. So, after seeing the village continuously, you know, bump up its defense, like teaching people to, to shoot arrows and building up the walls, building up the walls even more, it's it's cool to kind of see that actually have a purpose. Like we actually got to see an attack, which meant that all those defensive measures have come in handy. So, I do like that, and the fact that the troll, the uh, goo, he's a uh, He's dead, like he's a nun he's a reanimated dead by Ainz, of course. That's kind of all the confirmation anyone would really need that Ainz was uh he was okay with the village being attacked. He kinda of like, sure, go to go do that thing as long as as long as the people that matter don't die, it's 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 fine. And Beta was there to make sure that Nefira didn't die. And she did a pretty good job of that. Now, we got to see the goblins def defending themselves, shooting the arrows, throwing the stuff at you know the ogre faces and then getting their hands stuck and then arrows into the hands and 
arrows into the mouths and some of it was just really painful to watch but uh yeah it was like it was an all-out battle and they defended themselves pretty well all things considered obviously ogres are not very intelligent and the goblins definitely levied that fact to the best of their abilities to help win but still they are very strong so it's like even if you do take advantage of their low intellect you still have a fight on your hands one way or the other and while that was all going on, you had Nefira and Enri doing their best to not die, trying to distract the, the troll long enough. And they came up with some strategies about that, to try to take turns having him chase them, but that didn't go too well. He kind of just kept focusing on one person, Nefira in this case, so Nefira really had to step up and defend himself with magic ice arrow, not... Not ice arrow. Acid arrow. Those are not even remotely similar. Acid arrow, which helped a little bit, I guess, as well as... uh. What else? Did he, oh, he used hypnosis magic. It didn't accomplish much for some reason. I, th I would think that hypnosis, hypnosis magic would be very effective against a low intellect opponent like a troll. Although I don't know how how do troll intellects compare to ogre intellect? I would assume it might be a little bit higher, but I I have no basis for that assumption really. So I don't know. But the point is, it didn't really have much of an effect. And the fury was doing his best to not die, and he did a pretty good job of it, all things considered, considering the power difference here. But in the end, like I said, Beta was able to show up and defend him like it was nothing, like it wasn't even anything. It was just like, oh, so, Nefira, are you, are you having trouble with this guy? I mean, I could just, like, kill him right now. It's not a big deal. Just, just, are you okay? So, yeah, Beta, Beta had that, and because of that, Nefira didn't die. I didn't think, not for a second that I think Nefira would die. They've had way too much buildup for him the past couple seasons, and he hasn't really done what he needs to do for Ryan's yet. He's still kind of working on the potions and everything. And we haven't had our dinner that was foreshadowed in the previous episode, so I was pretty sure he wasn't going to die. They made that pretty obvious, so it was just a matter of how he would survive, and I was I was fairly certain it would be Beta. They wish, I took the trouble to lay down to Beta that these guys needed to survive, and Beta needs to make sure that happens, so it only makes sense that Beta would, you know, step up because of that and defend them, so that's how it all went down. In the midst of all this battling and chaos, you had Nefira actually confess to Enri. Which, it was one of those, I might die anyway, so I might as well, type of confessions. But he didn't die, so they actually had a bit of a conversation about that, you know, when things kind of settled down. And they didn't really say a lot about it, it was mostly Henry saying, I'm not sure exactly how I feel in regards to love, but I know that I like you and I want to be around you. So that was kind of the gist of what she was saying there, but it's pretty obvious that they're going to be together. They're kind of already together, really, so... There was no, never really much question about that. We kind of already knew they liked each other for a while. And Furia was obviously being much more obvious about it than Enri was, but it was still kind of obvious on her side as well. Like, I could imagine either of them being with anyone else besides each other, if that makes sense. And in that conversation, there wasn't really much blushing, but we did kind of get some blushing between the two of them, you know, later on eventually. <laughs> so, but more importantly, we got our dinner because we had that dinner invitation talked about before, and it was actually came into play in this episode. Beta and, Bo and also Yuri was there to kind of guide them to Ainz's home. You know, home sweet home, his humble abode. And they walked on in. And you Nemu. Nemu was really excited to be running around in, in this cool place because she's never actually been in this sort of large, you know, mansion, castle, palace, anything like that. So to be able to be here, she was just having the time of her life running around, having a lot of fun. She ran up to Ainz's, you know, lap and all that. And just head patting her. It was, just, it was a nice little scene, really. You could tell Henry was very nervous about this whole thing, putting like a small a small army's worth of sugar into her tea uh, and pointed out that it was very sweet when she drank it, which is to no surprise to anyone, as Nefiri pointed out as much. And I did say he wouldn't be able to join them for the dinner, I think he said, which is unfortunate, really, but still, it's it's going to be quite a nice dinner. We spent like half the episode listing off the various food items that are going to be on the menu. And you had Ayn's kind of parroting what Demir said to him earlier about, you know, for children, for the child and all that. So that was great. And yeah, that was the episode. It was a really good episode and I look forward to more. Thank you for watching and thank you Snoky, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.